Hi. Now, in this last part of the question, we're asked to determine whether there will be a second collision between A and B. And what I've done here is I've just sketched what we know so far about the speeds and the directions of A and B after impact. We found in an earlier part of the question, part A, that after A hit B, it was moving with this speed to the left, U multiplied by 3e minus 1 all over 4. And this is the speed that we found in part B after B hit the particle C. It was coming back in this direction to the left with a speed of 8u e squared plus 5ue minus 3u all over 28. So if we're to determine whether there's a second collision between A and B, then if there is a collision, I would expect this speed here to be greater than this speed. And that's where we start, okay? And we'll just say that if A and B collide, then we would expect this, so we'll just write it out again, 8u e squared plus 5ue minus 3u, all divided by 28, has got to be greater than u times 3e minus 1 over 4. Now what I'd want to do is get rid of these fractions next, and I'd multiply both sides by 28. So if we do that, we're just going to be left with 8u e squared plus 5u e minus 3u. And multiplying this side by 28, well the 4 will go into 28 7 times, so you just get that this is greater than 7u multiplied by 3e minus 1. Now there's a u in every term, so I can just divide through by u, take that one out, and if we now just expand and simplify this, what do we get? Well, we've got 8e squared, and then plus 5e minus 3, and then on the other side if we expand it, we're going to get greater than 21e minus 7. We've got a quadratic here, a quadratic inequality. So we need to bring everything over to the left-hand side. So we're going to get 80 squared, and then if we subtract 21e from both sides, take it away from the 5e, you're going to get minus 16e, and then add 7 to both sides, minus 3 add 7 gives us 4, and this is going to be greater than 0. I notice that we can now divide each term by 4. If we divide each term by 4, we're therefore going to have 2e squared minus 4e plus 1 is greater than 0. Now this doesn't factorise, so that's a bit of a shame really. So what we've got to do is use the quadratic formula. And a will be 2, b will be minus 4, and c will be 1. So using the quadratic formula, minus b is going to be minus minus 4, which is 4, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that's minus 4 all squared, minus 4 times a times c, all divided by 2a. 2 times 2. Now if you work this out, you'll find that you get, if you take the positive value, you end up with 1.707 and so on. And if you work out this with the negative value here, you get 0.2928 and so on. Now we know that E cannot be equal to 1.707, purely because e always has to be a value between 0 and 1. 
So we can rule this one out. And what about 0 0.2928 and so on? Well, the point was in part B, we found the possible range of values for E. We found that E, let's just put since, E had to be greater than 3 eighths, but less than or equal to a half. The 3 eighths as a decimal is 0 0.375. And you can see that 0.2928 then is not in this interval. So it follows from this statement that A and B will not collide. OK, so just finish that off, will not collide. OK.